Sitting in the morning sun Oh, I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in Oh, and I'll watch them roll away again Yeah, I'm sitting on the dark of the bay And watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time. Shalom Aleichem family. I bring you peace in the native Hebrew language of my Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one we call Jesus Christ. Toto Rabbah Yahweh. I thank God so much. Thank you for joining me today. Some might say I'm unconventional in my encouragement. I'm an unconventional motivational speaker. Are you ready? I don't care what you've been told, but your best life is not now. And living for your dreams now are temporary and they're not as important as eternity. Our eternal life begins after the Savior returns. And if you don't live now, like that's the most important thing, then nothing else is gonna matter. You say you love God? I'm not gonna question your love this morning, but let Measure it by what Jesus calls love. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Second John 1 6. And this is love. You want to know what love is? Here's the word of God, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. John 14:14. 14, 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15:10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, even as I've kept my Father's commandment, abide in his love. John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Jesus is saying, love for me is obedience to all my words, all, com all my commandments. One day, the lion will lie down with the lamb. But until then, this world is not our home. We are called apart to our Father's kingdom. Undeceived by graven images, with eyes to see truth in plain sight. Genesis 1-1 from the Hebrew translation, and Elohim said, let there be a rakia, expanse, dome, firmament, in the midst of the Mayim, the waters, and let it divide the Mayim from the Mayim. We rebuke the evils of sun worship and idolatry, Deuteronomy 4.24 The Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. The Bible says, There's nothing new under the sun. And in those last days, the scripture says that all the kings of the earth will give their power to the beast. That system is forming now. Alien deception will be a part of it because the world loves lies. The Bible says that truth will set you free. And that couldn't be more literal in the case of the lost and scattered children of Yasharel who are starting to remember who they are. The parable of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, it's about the Negro from the transatlantic slave trade, detailed in Deuteronomy 2868, and about other scattered Hebrew descendants. The light of truth is shining about history and about the wickedness in this world. It's inevitable. Until the risen Messiah returns, there's nothing this world can offer me. My citizenship is in his kingdom. Some might say that I'm 
an unconventional motivational speaker. It was in the early 70s, was only two years old here, and so many years later now. My family, like yours, I'm sure, can also relate to the memories now lost to time. When you're young, it's hard to comprehend how fast it's all about to fly by, and how important it is to find your grounding in the cornerstone, Yeshua the Messiah the rock of our salvation. The Bible explains in Proverbs 22, 6, to train up your child in the way that they should go, so that when they grow old, they will not depart. But even before they turn teenager, everything in this world moves to pull them away from our Father's will. And I still praise my Heavenly Father for my grandmother, Louise Martin, and my Aunt Wandy, who were both always directing me to the Father's kingdom, now both asleep, resting peacefully, until the day that the dead in Yeshua rise. And now it's her children, the next generation that I fellowship with. If you haven't already got the message I'm trying to make, we're born, and before we know it, half of our life is gone. Cousin Greta, wasn't we just talking about this the other day? And at some point, before it ends, you may be asking yourself, what was the meaning of it all? What was the meaning of life? Was it about love, relationships? Was it about money or desires of the heart? Today we're gonna to discover the answer to these questions. And in that opening piece, our good brother, the late David Wilkerson, already alluded to some of the answers but we're gonna elaborate a little bit more. And we're gonna do that by looking at one of my first videos that I made when I began my YouTube channel. All I'm gonna need you to do before we begin this short three minute video is grab a piece of paper and a pen and think of your oldest memory that you can recall while growing up. And if you can't remember one from that long ago, just think of one more recent. I'll give you an example of one of mine. I knew little Jojo and Naomi since they were just pint-sized little Looney Tunes. They lived on property at my old job. One day, while sitting on the golf cart, Jojo asked me, Uncle Lee, can I drive? And I said, no Jojo, you're too little. I had to take the key out the ignition because this brave little girl was reaching for it to turn it on. As she looked at me with an angry face, she told me, Uncle Lee, don't piss me off. I didn't know what to say, but it's a memory that I'll never forget. This video is dedicated to them, and to my son, and to my nephew Kier and my niece Destiny, and to my nephew Joshua, who has this tiny little Bible and always has the most interesting questions to ask from it. It's dedicated to all my beloved young ones, as well as every innocent child who needs their parents to instruct them in the path of salvation in Yeshua. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, turn the paper long ways and draw a one foot line and let's begin. Ever ask yourself what's life all about? Or what's the meaning of life? Let's talk about the birds and the bees but not in the way the world talks about them. Take a moment and think about waking up in the morning. What's the first thing you hear? I hear the birds. They're chirping, they're going about their business. They're doing exactly what God intended them to do. In Isaiah 43, seven, it reads, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Ever notice the bees? One flower to the next, pollinating, just as God intended. 
grab a paper and a pen. Draw a line for me about one foot long line. I'm going to entitle this the meaning of life. On that one foot line, mark off the first inch of that line. And then think back real quick to your earliest memory as a child. My earliest memory was, I don't know, four or five. My grandmother had a purple popsicle she gave me. Uh, think to that earliest memory and then picture where you are now. That memory of that time gone by, it seems like the snap of a finger to me. It seems like yesterday. And if you go forward 20, 30 years from now, you'll probably remember the, the moments that are happening right now. And you'll say to yourself then, wow, that went by so fast. So think about that spot you marked off on the one foot line, that one inch. Think of that as your lifespan right now. From the beginning of that line to the end of that line, that one inch. And all the rest of that line, that represents eternity. I understand not everybody believes like me. But for the millions out there, especially that are believers in Christ, that understand God's kingdom, you got to understand that all of the things of this world, they're of little importance to what God has in store for us. And the meaning of life to me is wanting to share that salvation, that gift from Christ to everyone else in the world. So let me wrap this up with my final words. We all have to be reminded of what is most important in life sometimes. And who among us does not need to increase in our faith? I'll be the first to admit I do. But if you're a believer in Christ Jesus and you find more comfort in the things of this world over his promises, then you just may need this reminder. Everything we could ever hope for will be found in our Father's kingdom, not here. Friends, if we're not set free by truth, then we're living in bondage to the lie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Your encouragement is greatly appreciated. God bless. I want to be honest with you. I'm no one important or special for bringing this message. And in fact, as is the case in every video I make, I'm learning something myself. I'm walking out my salvation with fear and trembling. And in fact, in, in this video project, having explained all the characteristics of the title of the movie, I still needed to call up someone. And so I, I got a hold of my, my good brother, Pastor Brown. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. And remember, everything that happened to you that was good, God did it. God did it. Who did it? God did it. Who did it? God did it. And I explained what it is I'm doing, and he packaged it up and summarized it in one sentence. It kind of blew my mind a little bit because uh, I wasn't able to find quite the words. And, and so when I asked him, what's the meaning of life? He replied to me without thought, without hesitation. The meaning of life is fulfilling the purpose of God. And I know what the world says. They believe that the meaning of life is to serve self. But it's not about serving self. It's about sacrifice. It's about serving the Most High God. It's about worshiping Him, loving Him, obeying Him. And in loving Him and obeying Him, we keep His commands. The commands explained by Yahshua the Messiah. And if we fail at that, then nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. <laughs>